Good morning, happy Saturday, all you lovely people. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to this Facebook Live. Today we're talking about the five top things you can do to make this intuitive eating journey super easy. Well, simpler. <laughs> As you hop on this morning, just uh, let me know. Good morning, Jane, if you can hear me and uh, let me know if you can see me as well. Um, and I hope you're all surviving the great toilet paper shortage. I don't know what to say. I honestly do not know what to say. Um, just sheer, sheer lunacy. I went downstairs, we've got a Woolworth store actually in the building next door to us. And I had to go down yesterday, day before yesterday, and buy things for dinner, some mushrooms and onions and things. And I thought, I'll just go over and have a look at the toilet roll. Good morning, Margaret. Uh, um, toilet, um, you know, area, toilet roll area. And there was a girl standing there, one of the workers, and I said, what's going on? There was none, no, there was no toilet paper. And she said, it's, she said, people are waiting for the delivery to come and they're like locusts. And she said, before we put the limit on it, people are rushing, filling their trolleys up with toilet paper. She said, I've never seen anything like it. So um, crazy, crazy, crazy. Just a couple of things about this. You know, fear, yeah, that's right, Josie, <laughs> Use newspaper. Fear reduces your immune system. So it's very important that you are using um, things right now like meditation, good morning, Nicole, meditation, um, EFT, anything where you feel the fear coming up, um, you know, there can be a, a, a habit or a tendency to kind of fall into that um, uh, herd mentality, the fear that's building, the press isn't helping. If that's coming up for you, use EFT because it'll bring the fear down and help you make better decisions and that's what EFT is best for. So make sure that you're reading, as I mentioned on my radio interview this week, don't read the headlines, actually get into the story because you would usually find many of those stories have health officials recommend that you are washing your hands and that you are um, eating well and um, you know using tissues and all that type of stuff. It's just craziness at the moment and just be very mindful of as the fear, but it's a great opportunity, I think, to really understand where your fear levels rise because it can actually give you an understanding of some past uh, stories where perhaps you felt out of control or that others made decisions for you or even if you felt fearful at some point in time because you didn't quite know what was going on. So use this as a time to really get to some limiting beliefs that you may be feeling, um, but if, certainly don't buy into all the rubbish. Um, just eat well, drink lots of water, plenty of vitamin D. So foods like uh, salmon, mushrooms, uh, vitamin D is shown to, um, to increase your immune system. And of course, regular fruits and vegetables with lots of vitamin C. So eat well, wash your hands, tap. Simple as that, we're all good, we're all good. All right, today we are going to get on to um, the five steps that are gonna make this intuitive eating process super easy. Um, and these are many of the things that continue to come up when I'm working with clients um, that seem to be real sticking points on this. And uh, so this, this is sort of a, an adjunct to it. Um, so if we're ready to go, let's start straight away. So the number one uh, thing, one of the, the most powerful things you can do is drink water. And I know that sounds simple. But for many people, we don't drink enough water. And right now in summer here in Australia, we're walking in and out of air conditioning all the time and often sitting in air conditioning. And we don't realize how dehydrating that is. It's actually very drying to the skin. Um, so ensure that you are drinking plenty of water. Or there's a couple of reasons for that. One, often we'll go we'll reach for food because we think we're uh, we're hungry, we're actually not, we're thirsty. Um, the, the next thing about it is drinking lots of water actually boosts your metabolism um, and actually stops fluid retention. So that sometimes when you're trying to figure out what's going on intuitively for you, uh, if you're not drinking enough water, you aren't making the right decisions. Yeah, that's right, Nicole. 
Yeah, Nicole was practicing this last couple of weeks, um, increasing the water, and it's made a huge difference. I recommend at least six bottles of water a day, and I have mine on my desk. Um, I have a couple of essential oils that I put in there as well, some grapefruit and maybe some lemon essential oils, which are just lovely. Um, and then I have uh, on my to-do list every day, I've just got six little um, strokes that I put down the bottom and cross them off as I've finished the bottles of water. Um, and my challenge is I'm not allowed to have a glass of wine until I've drunk six bottles of water. <laughs> it's my mental challenge. Um, but you, I, I mean, you, there's a real difference. I know in my energy levels, in my focus, if I am not drinking enough water. So that's step number one. Make sure you're drinking enough water and really maybe increasing that water, especially here if you're um, dialing in today from anywhere in Queensland where it's super humid at the moment. Um, we're just sweating all the time, so make sure you're increasing that water intake. So number one is water. Yeah, Angela, I know when I forget my, yep, 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 my mind, exactly. Yeah, crossing it off, such a good feeling, Nicole. Exactly, because it's just like, ah, oh, it's an achievement. <laughs> and we forget. Um, I tend to be able to drink a lot in the morning, and then I tend to sort of forget as the afternoon goes on. So having that little mental um, uh, image, visual image there, just reminds me. Um, and especially around about three o'clock, um, for me, that's kind of a downtime. I think that's, you know, goes back to when you needed all the energy when the kids came home. Around about three o'clock, I find that I'll tend to be thinking, do I need a cup of tea or another bottle of water? And that kind of gets me right through to the rest of the day. So water, number two. Now this is really interesting research. Um, that I came across a little while ago, and that is sleep. If you're not getting enough sleep, it impacts on two hormones in our bodies that regulate metabolism and hunger. So, number one, Josie, sipping water is better for you too. Yeah, exactly, Josie. Yeah, yeah, sipping the water, absolutely. I totally agree. I've got a little um, straw, water straw, you know, a paper straw in my drink bottle so I can only have a little bit at a time. Um, I'm going to talk about these two hormones that reverse working when you're not getting enough sleep. Now, the two hormones, one is called leptin and it regulates our appetite, so it tells us when we're full, and the other one is ghrelin, which stimulates appetite. That was the one that tells you when you're hungry. Now, when, you, when you're sleeping, leptin tells your brain you've got plenty of energy so you don't wake up at three o'clock in the morning starving. Right? It tells you you've got plenty of energy. But when you don't get enough sleep, what happens is it flips and it actually increases so you're feeling more hungry. Ghrelin is the hormone that stimulates hunger. So it, it you know, makes sure you do eat. And what happens with that is when it slows your metabolism. When the leptin isn't working, it stops burning the calories, right? So leptin slows down so you're not burning calories, reminds your body that you've got plenty of food. And ghrelin takes over and stimulates and, in, and slows your metabolism at the same time because you're not putting enough food in. Now, when you don't get enough sleep, the ghrelin and leptin operate in your body like it's slowing things down. Now, what's really interesting in this research, what they found was when you're not getting enough sleep, that the foods you reach for are foods that give you the quick burst of energy. Like they'll be like the high, uh, things with lots of carbohydrates in them, like pasta, rice, um, sweet foods, uh, muffins, croissants, stuff like that, that gives you that big boost of energy, right? And because it, your hunger hormone's not working properly, it actually doesn't register that you're full or you had enough. So sleep is the other one. If you can ensure that you're getting enough sleep, that can help um, boost your metabolism. Now, I know for many of us, as we go through kind of perimenopause and menopause, sleep is a real issue. So there are a couple of things that you can do. Number one, uh, making sure that you are turning those screens off, not watching TV just before you go to bed, um, really doing something that kind of allows the body to, um, the, your natural melatonin to increase. Um, doTERRA have got some great um, essential oil blends that have been really working for a couple of my clients at the moment um, that can really help. 
Um, but if you can get that sleep sorted, um, at least seven hours of sleep, otherwise you're really battling against your hormones. And the trouble is that those hormones are making you naturally want those high processed carbohydrates. So making sure that you are getting, so one is water, two is sleep. So looking at your sleep. And also, I'm a great believer in the, in the my dad calls it the 12 o'clock kip, K-I-P, a little kind of power nap in the day. I'm a really great proponent of a power nap. I like 20 minutes, um, anywhere sort of between 12 and one, um, just to put my head down. Um, in my, when I was working in corporate, I used to just shut the door um, and close the blinds. I had, a, I had a window that opened onto the reception area, closed the blinds and just had a little nap for about 20 minutes. Um, now, I'm fortunate I work from home, so I can do that at home, but it really just does help. If you're getting that disrupted sleep during the, the, um, the night, or you, like me, an early riser, making sure that you're getting good sleep can really help by adding that little nana nap. Any, any nana nap people? Morning, Elle. Um, any nana nap people here? Any people that love their little 20 minute? Um, it's so, so good to so see many organizations, many corporations now introducing um, uh, sleeping pods. Um, Google, Facebook, um, HubSpot, um, Amazon, there's a few others that are just um, implementing these sleeping pods or areas for people to get under their desk, have a little sleep, um, and because it increases your creativity. So, so one is water, two is sleep. The next one, number three, and I go on and on about this all the time, and that's exercise. And um, this for a number of reasons, what I call moving with purpose. Um, yeah, an hour meditation at 1 p.m., Nicole, that's great. Fantastic. Um, that can really help just kind of boost your energy a little too for the rest of the afternoon and your focus. Great, great, great. Me, Nana Nap Queen. <laughs> yeah, Josie, absolutely. Me too. I just love it. And just 20 minutes. I actually put a little timer on. If I have any more than that, I'm just gaga for the rest of the day. Just 20 minutes. That's enough. It just gets you there. It's fabulous. I love it. I love it. I love it too, Josie. All right, moving with what I call moving with purpose rather than exercise. Moving with purpose. Now, there's two aspects of this. Number one, when you exercise, it reduces stress by uh, increasing the endorphins in your brain. Number two, by adding some strength exercise, you're actually um, boosting the, the, um, your metabolism by um, building strength in your muscles. And it's really important as we age um, that you're doing those strength exercises as well. So it's great to go for a walk, about 20 minutes. Make sure you're adding um, two 20-second bursts of as fast as you can. Um, but to do something when you get home if you don't belong to a gym. So some push-ups, um, some tricep dips on your coffee table, um, some, some ab work, just a few crunches. You can do, I'd like to do planks. Anything that really builds that muscle mass. It's really important that you think about it. And I did a whole um, video on um, posture a couple of weeks ago. So if you haven't seen that, that's here somewhere in the group, how important um, you can, when you're working out, to really focus on your posture, which is at the core. And when you're doing that, you're constantly engaging the core. So if, you, if you're practicing intuitive eating, but you're not exercising regularly, what I call moving with purpose, if you're not doing that, it's not gonna work anyway. Um, so at least four times a week, five, I really prefer. A couple of rest days in there, don't have to do it seven days a week. Um, on a Sunday, Jerry and I often go for a long walk. Um, it's often, in, I do all the talking, he's in silence. <laughs> he's, he's not a morning person, but you know, getting out and doing that exercise in the morning is really, really, really important. So number one, water, increasing your water. Number two, sleep, that sleep, really focus on getting a good night's sleep, if not increasing those nana naps. Um, number three, move with purpose. So number four, number four in this process is um, the ability to ask the right question. This is really important in this intuitive eating journey, is tapping into what I call your creative present. When you're in the present moment um, going through this journey, you're able to tap into that intuition that's part of this whole process. And I'm constantly talking with my clients about asking themselves the right questions. It's so important. Whenever you're going through challenges, if you can get into the habit of saying, 
what's going on for me? Okay, what is this limiting belief or this limitation that's coming up for me? What's this stress that I am going through right now that's causing me to choose to eat or, or feel tired or n not go with this plan or not trust my intuition or drop into fear? What is that? That's really important. This whole process of learning to trust in your intuition comes from asking the right questions. Now, I mentioned last week on last week's Facebook Live where I had a situation over Christmas where everybody gave us chocolates. We had about seven boxes of them. And I was eating them all the time. I was just going into the pantry, eating them all the time. And at one point I stopped and asked, what's really going on for me? Why am I doing this? Why am I continually reaching for this? Because there was a reason for it. And it came up with sadness around the kids not being home for Christmas. Once I identified that, right, in, in, the, in the creative present, once I identified that and could use EFT and meditation to shift that limiting belief around, um, you know, missing out or nothing ever goes right for me or why has this always happened to me? Once I could change all that, then the eating just moved back to being normal again. Because whenever you're in a situation where your eating is kind of out of control, there's something going on. There's something going on. So if you can stay in what I call that creative present, and ask yourself the right question. Okay, what's really going on for me right now? What is really going on for me? It's that way that you can, um, actually I'm just, I'm just seeing um, these questions coming up. I'm gonna get all the questions at the moment um, that are coming up. If you've got any questions, pop them in the, in the comments and I will get around to answering them in a minute. Um, and that's where sometimes you need a different set of ears. You know, the, what I have found was when I'm working with clients that sometimes they're asking themselves questions but actually not hearing the answers. And you can go round and around in a circle. The way that this process works is that when you identify what the limitation is, based on that belief that's holding you back, it, it will shift. It, it just goes away. If you keep repeating the pattern, if it keeps happening, it means you're not shifting the belief. Remember last week we talked about the, 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 how, how easy it is for us to have negative thoughts and we have you know well over 20,000 negative thoughts a day and then we're creating those smooth neural pathways we can easily slip into it without re realizing and that's why that power of asking the right question is so important in that 10-step methodology i talk about that you know that when you ask the right question that 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 opens up a whole new uh, way of receiving answers but it's, it's it's easy to fall into the victim mode why is this happening to me rather than what's going on for me and the minute you start saying why you're falling into victim mode. So the, the wordage around asking the right questions is super important. Um, and again, I'm just gonna pop in the, in the um, group here. If uh, you wanna have a chat with me, you can set up, um, we can have a strategy session. Let's go have a look at some of these questions before I move into number five. Yeah, Nicole, we, we are good at hiding the truth from ourselves. You know, we don't wanna go there. It's uncomfortable. It's really uncomfortable. And, uh, Especially when it comes to weight, um, we can very easily make it about the food. Very easily make it about, you know, I've got a diet. Right now, in particular, the worst thing you can be doing is restrictive eating. The worst. Um, especially when all this stuff going on, you know, fear and stuff about the coronavirus. If you're restrictive eating, that, that's just the worst thing you can be doing. Don't even go there, that's just craziness. But, you know, as I mentioned at the beginning, while this is happening right now, it's a really good opportunity to look at your own limiting fear-based beliefs because we will reach for comfort in fear. That's our body's naturally wired to do that. We're gonna reach for comfort, and for many of us, 
you know, as food becomes that comfort, we reach for the foods that are going to make. Isn't it interesting? Just, I just had a flash then. Rice and pasta are disappearing off the fruit of the shells. Comforting food. <laughs> just made that connection. That's really interesting. Yeah, hiding the truth from ourselves. Angela, the five Tibetans first thing in the morning. Oh, I haven't heard of that, Angela. What, what is that? That's interesting. Let me know what that is. Any other questions? Um, <laughs> thank you, Nicole. Yeah, when Sally taught me about what different foods meant game changing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow, you know, there's three that we, I've really um, highlighted in the work that I've done, um, what reaching for those foods means on an emotional level and what we're trying to solve with that. Um, they're usually chocolates and sweets, bread um, and um, crunchy food, uh, like chips, crackers. And when you get to that emotional part, you begin, you know, if, you're na if you're naturally reaching for those foods, then I can pretty well identify what's going on for you pretty quickly. And we just need to work on that and everything else falls apart, just falls away. It's just That's just as easy. Uh, you know, everything we do is for a reason. We don't do anything random. That's one of the things I, I learned with raising a, a young man living with autism is that um, everybody does things for a reason. There's no randomness in anything we do. It's just it's layer upon layer, right? We just layer it. We layer it and we think we're doing things. It's not. You know, every time I see something, um, you know, people angry, you know, or, or, or even road rage, you know, what's, what's that pain that person's dealing with? And if we can understand that, it just makes a huge difference to everything we do, including ourselves. And if we, thank you, Angela. I'll have a look at that. And if we understand that every choice we make is simply we're trying to heal something that's going on uh, in us, if we're choosing something that doesn't honour us and honour our body, then when we understand that, it's simple. It's not about the food. Never about the food. And it's never about the weight either. It's why we make those choices, right? why the weight's there, why we make those food choices. And when we understand that, body releases it doesn't need to be there anymore you know and in many cases I'm working with people who've been through you know trauma um, they've, they've laid on weight over the years and that's just to keep themselves safe being bigger felt safer being bigger felt I'm, I'm more separate from people uh, being bigger meant I felt more grounded um, I could hide there's so many things that stop this process we are naturally intuitive beings and food should always be intuitive choices. You know, that's one of the things I learned, you know, marrying somebody who could eat whatever he wanted. But the universe sent you some really hard lessons sometimes. <laughs> I used to think there was no justice in the world. Now I get it. Now I get it. All right, so let's quickly run over those four before I move to the fifth one, which to me is the most powerful. Number one, water. Make sure you're increasing your water. Number two, sleep. Look at that sleep because you may have, you know, the leptin regulates that hormone uh, uh, hunger, ghrelin stimulates it, and you could be flipping that right around the wrong way. So um, I mean, that's something you really need to look at. Number three, move with purpose. As you know, you know, this group is peppered with things about exercise. It is just to me so, so important. We have to move. I find myself sitting here, um, you know, at my desk. Boy, sometimes for you know hours, I have to really think sometimes during the day to get up and actually move around. It can, can so easy. So the exercise, pumping the, the, the um, oxygen through the body, increases the endorphins, increases your energy, makes you think more clearly. And when you're thinking more clearly, you make better choices. Uh, number four, asking the right questions. Okay, what, you know, okay, what is really going on for me right now? What is really going on for me? And you might need somebody to listen to you. So I'll pop that link to the to the strategy session if you're ready to have a chat with me about that. Okay, number five. Number five, and I really and honestly believe this is probably the most important aspect of this intuitive eating journey. And that is, what is your purpose? Why are you here? Are you living it? Now, purpose doesn't have to be some on stage Oprah Winfrey type moment. Your purpose could be that your role in this lifetime 
is to just be the best person you can possibly be. Your role could be to be a leader in your organisation or in your team. Your purpose could be right now you need to be focused on being a mother to your children. Um, you know, when um, David, when we, we first got David's diagnosis back in 1990, into 96 and going into 97, um, you know, we made a decision at that point, Jerry and I together made a decision that if, we, if I was, if we were going to help our son um, work through this autism diagnosis, if we were going to survive in a family, one of us needed to be focused inwards. One of us needed to be there for the therapies and their home when he got home, you know, at that second stage. And because I was working in the fitness industry at the time, which required me to be out of the house early mornings and the evenings, it wasn't working. My purpose at that time was to be the mother to my children. And even though I stepped away from a career and sometimes I really, you know, uh, wondered if I did the right thing and sometimes I'd think, you know, did I, was I taking an easy route? It wasn't. When I look back on that now, that was absolutely my purpose at that time. You know, I believe there's two, right? Soul purpose and life purpose. And your soul purpose never changes. Life purpose moves as we do. And wherever you are at right now, that whatever you're doing, you bring that soul purpose to it. It's so critical that you are bringing your soul purpose to whatever you're doing right now. And that's usually a word to, okay? To teach, to heal, to parent, to um, inspire, to paint, to create. It begins with the word to, and then your life purpose wraps around it, whatever is going on for you at that time. At times that I stepped out of my life purpose, which is what I believe I'm doing absolutely right now, is when I, for that moment, for that moment in time, I needed to be there for my child and my other, two other daughters. And you know what? They are living extraordinary lives. My son David now um, <laughs> is married and lives overseas. And I found out on Twitter a couple of weeks ago, is about to speak on stage at a big event in Toronto. Go figure. How could, all those years of speech therapy. <laughs> all those years of speech therapy. But you know what? Because at that point in time, that was my purpose. And I think a lot of people get hung up on this whole thing about what's my purpose in life. It changes. It, it changes. And so it's like, okay, am I living my purpose? Because intuition flows beautifully, right? When you are doing what you're supposed to be doing. When you're in flow, the serendipity just, I mean, you know, I'm sure everybody on this call today has had those moments that you know when you're in flow and you're doing the right thing, opportunities just flow. Whether you take them up or not is the thing that makes the difference. And if you're sad or you're feeling like you're not living your true life, how can you eat intuitively? It doesn't work like that. In fact, many of my clients, when I'm, when I'm working with clients, that's what we deal with first. Are you doing what you are supposed to be doing? Where are you hiding? Where are you shrinking? You cannot have intuitive eating working for you if you're not living joyfully, if you're not living your best life. It just doesn't work like that because food becomes the thing we reach for to try and solve that. We're trying to find in food what what we can find if we're living our purpose. Just that's the way it works. You know, I, you know, I look back on those times in my life when, uh, and I didn't think that I was living my purpose. You know, when I, those, you know, you know, you know what it's like when you're raising children and you're at home and you think everybody else is out there having a good time and you're stuck at home with the children. And I remember going to a cocktail party one night and, um, you know, I, was, I had my own TV show, I used to train instructors and, you know, I you know, used to teach war aerobic classes a week. I was out in front of everybody. And so whenever we went to somewhere, we went to a cocktail party, say, what do you do? Well, I'm a TV show host. But, you know, I had a title. 
And when I, we chose to stay home, I remember going to this event one night with Jerry and somebody asked me, he said, oh, what do you do? I said, well, actually right now I'm staying home, you know, um, looking after the children. Zip. That person could not wait to get away from me. <laughs> it's like you become this invisible person. And yet, and then because I became internal, right? I turned inward like, oh my God, you know, am I not doing the right thing? And I knew in my heart, I was doing the right thing, but it wasn't. I wasn't getting that feedback from others, um, and so those are the times when I really struggled with the whole weight thing. You know, even though I knew it, it wasn't until I, in um, hindsight, uh, that I could see what was really going on. And you know what? <sighs> it's interesting, isn't it, that we turn inwards and we use food to try and heal that pain, try and make us feel better. So the work that I do with, with clients goes way beyond just about intuitive eating. I help you find you again. I help you find you. Who are you? What do you bring to the world? Why are you shrinking and hiding? Because there's a reason for it. There's an absolute reason for it. And when we understand what that reason is, we find the pattern, we release the emotional connection to the story, Intuitively, you attract to attra you become this attractive person, right? That's what attractiveness is. People become attracted to you. But when you're hiding and shrinking, no one can find you. <laughs> and because of the pain of it, we eat. All right, let's have a look at some of these um, questions. Oh, here we go. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yes, 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 yes. Here we go. I'm going to get to the comments. Let's have a look. Where are you shrinking? Yes, Margaret. Where are you shrinking? Oh my goodness, absolutely. Just that, that, that's the question, right? That's that number four, ask the right question. If it's not working, where are you shrinking? Why are you feeling that you're not good enough to be you? You know, where are you feeling you're not good enough to be you? Mm, and it's just people, words, events from your past. That's it, making you feel like that. Uh, Nicole, I've been healing my girls and now my clients. Yep, 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 you, that is exactly where you're at, Nicole. Absolutely where you're at. Um, I'm just having trouble getting the questions up. Um, 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 I'm going to go to here and have a and find them. To heal is mine. Yep, I actually see that, Nicole, and you. Yeah, yeah, to heal. Oh, yes, you nod workouts, exactly. Um, the NOD workout, now it's here somewhere in the group. Um, it's just... I'm a great believer when you're exercising, right? It has to be quick. It has to be quick. If it's not, you're not gonna do it. So the NOD workout, nitric oxide dump, we talk about it all the time in this group. Fantastic, five minutes and you're done. 20 minutes walk, 10 minutes one way, add 20 seconds of HIT, 10 minutes back, 20 seconds, you're done. Do some you know, 20 push-ups, 20 tricep dips, 20 um, crunches, do it again, done for the day. Add some stretching. You're done, you're done, you're done. Josie, yes, we often like approval from outside world. It doesn't matter what other people think. It doesn't, you know, and that's so true, but it's really hard, don't you think? Because sometimes it depends on what we're looking for. Um, for instance, if, you're, if you've never received approval from your parents and you've fought all your life, to seek approval from them, you may be um, mirroring that to others when actually all you really want is approval from your parents. Significant. And sometimes you're never going to get it. You know, that was something I had to really come to terms with. Um, many of us grew up in a different era, right? From where now we tell our kids all the time we love them, we're proud of them, they can do anything they want. But most of us didn't grow up in that era. Most of us grew up when we were told to, you know, we could always improve, um, we were given lots of judgment and discipline. And the only time the word special and you were used in the same sentence was what makes you think you're so special. So we grew up in a very, very different era um, to how we raise our children now. And, uh, and that still sits there within that inner child, uh, constantly seeking that approval. Um, if you are doing something in your work at the moment and your career and you're continually striving um, without um, celebrating and honouring, um, you need to find what that motivation is because um, you can 
oftentimes that's the adrenaline and the motivation to do things is the seeking approval, you don't get it, you keep moving on instead of celebrating where you're at. Um, that's a big one I know for many people I work with is that seeking approval. Um, yeah, okay, so you do one after your meditation too, great for releasing energy, lovely. So that's the NOD workout you're talking about, Nicole, right? Excellent, excellent. All right, so let's just run over all those again. One, things that make a uh, intuitive eating journey, water, 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 increase the water. Um, absolutely. Number two, sleep, um, critical. You've got to get that sleep sorted. All right, good, good. Thanks, Nicole. Um, get that sleep sorted. We don't want that gorilla and the from working opposite, right? <laughs> Because they make you, if they're not working properly, they make you eat food like chocolate and, and croissants and muffins and things like that, you know, quick boost of energy. So um, looking at that sleep issue, let me know if I can help you with some doTERRA oil blends. That, um, no, they're really good for that. Um, third, move with purpose, exercise. 20 minutes. It's not that hard. Half an hour. Half an hour. Um, plenty of things that you can do. Um, get move, that body moving, for goodness sake. And again, if you need some help, you want to have a chat with me um, to find out a little bit more how I work. Number four, ask the right questions. What's really going on for me right now? And if you're not hearing the answers, reach out to me. Let's have a chat. Um, and number five, your purpose. Are you living a joyful life? Are you actually stepping into your absolute purpose and that's how intuitive eating works pretty simple eh? instead of restricting food how about just doing those <laughs> so much easier so much more joyful when you are just listening to your body it's just it's just this amazing thing and do you know when um a, a, a client of mine said it beautifully one day when she said, I suddenly realized if I wasn't having those 20,000 negative thoughts a day about my body, what I could actually do with my life. What I could actually do with my life. Absolutely. You're welcome. You're welcome, Jose. Fantastic, everybody. Uh, mum, 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 mum. Any other questions? I don't know why the questions aren't coming up for me here. I'm trying to grab them here. Um, yeah, I've had my non-workers to-do list. Great, 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 great. I've heal. I've been healing my girls. Absolutely. Oh, you're welcome. Oh, Nicole. You're such a delight to work with. Um, I love my clients. Absolutely love my clients. So I just, I just, I just love them. I am, I'm so blessed. I am so, so, so blessed to work with such amazing, incredible humans. So... That's it for today, my friends. Um, any other questions, please let me know. Um, see you Monday, Margaret. You're welcome. Thank you, Jose. Fantastic. Please reach out if you want to have a chat, if you're ready to live joyfully and not be scared about this coronavirus. Oh, my goodness. I don't even want to buy toilet paper because it makes me look like a loser. <laughs> I've plenty of work for a week and a half. We're fine. We're fine. I might sneak down at 7 a.m. one morning so no one can see me. Um, alrighty. Thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful weekend. Reach out. Reach out if you feel like. Angela, thanks. I just had a, a big flash of the obvious. <laughs> BFO. Oh, I love that, Angela. I love it. A BFO. Big flash of the obvious. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> Woohoo! That's my new saying. I'm going to borrow that, Angel. That is fantastic. Everybody else, I hope you've had a BFO today. A big flash of the obvious. And I look forward to seeing you um, in the group during the week. And please uh, reach out if you want to have a chat. I'd love to help you um, really embrace this fabulous, fabulous journey of intuitive eating. Just tell me, it will change your life. I know, I'm a living, breathing example of it. It will absolutely change your life. All right, my friends, have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I will see you next week. Bye for now.